Hello, and welcome to the Whimsical Sort blog. If brand new pencils and a blank piece of paper make your mind race like the Indy 500, then hopefully you can learn something from this video. This may come as a shock, but images are incredibly important in life and education. After all, even the art of mathematics cannot help but spur on the illustration of a rectangle or a paraboloid from time to time. Words are an incredibly important communication tool, but when we see an image, our mind translates the essence of what we see at light speed to something we can verbally comprehend. A picture's worth a thousand words, right? All of this to say, illustrating rocks. But there's a big problem. I can see an image in my brain. Say I've got an awesome battle axe wielding paladin annihilating a land squid. But when I put it down on paper, it looks like this. Now, I want you to know that even after years of drawing, I still can't get exactly what's in my head down on paper. Wasn't that discouraging? Well, actually no, it's not, because the goal of getting it on paper is to make it better than your original idea. How can you do that? Through research, practice, and persistence. Let's start. Research. Do I have to? I mean, I'm spending all of this time not drawing, and I just want to draw. You can do that, but then your work will look more like the second picture of the paladin that I showed. From experience, I have produced innumerable works of art that I have hated after weeks of looking at them, and that's merely because I cut corners and didn't do my research. Also, as a little plug, you can discover so many cool things by doing your research that actually make your idea far better and more believable than you originally expected. Next, practice. What's that mean? It means drawing real things. A lot. I don't want to draw fruit. Then draw a chair. I don't want to draw that either. Granted, there are some artists who love to draw these types of things. I do not. I'd rather draw people or situations that arise in my head from a story that Rupert and I have concocted. But here's the catch. Practicing by drawing real things makes it so that you can translate 3D objects into 2D. It brings people and backgrounds to life as you set the stage for a very intriguing story. So here's what I do. I set two hours aside every week to practice my real life drawing. Once I'm done, I can draw what I want to draw and it's improved slightly. And finally, be persistent. If you're excited about an idea, be willing to take critique to make it better. Some people seem to think that the secret to being a good artist is being born with talent. Mm, that's not true at all. The secret is in persistence. Persistence being the love of drawing and the willingness to get better at it. You can almost see all of these points kind of like getting in shape physically, only drawing is way more fun in my book. No matter how much drawing you do, you can always work on these steps. Why do I say that? Because I'm still trying not to get upset with Rupert when he critiques my drawings or grumble at my mom when she's asking if I did my research. And to be honest, I sometimes skip practice days. But I find if I am missing any one of these three things, my work isn't as good as it could and should be. Okay, so you follow the three steps. Can I guarantee everything you draw will be worth something? No, I can't. But it is good for at least one thing. Knowing how to make your next project better.